Hi, I'm Jeff Ludy, the owner of Houston Window Experts. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I want to talk about some tips for buying windows for your new home. If you're building a house, not remodeling, but actually building a house, there's a few things that I want to talk about that I think might save you some heartache, some trouble, some money, and give you a much better overall experience than maybe you thought you could have. But before I jump in there, I want to let you know that if you live in the Houston area, you should come by and visit our showroom. I'm standing right here in our beautiful showroom where we have over a dozen brands of windows and doors to choose from, including Anderson and Pella and Marvin and Windsor and many different more. And if you don't live in the Houston area, you live somewhere else, I know a lot of great window companies all over the country. Check out jeffslist.com. You might find someone there near you. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that I think might be helpful to you. So you decided to build a house. Maybe it's a custom house. Maybe this is your dream house. This is the forever house, right? That's the kind of customers we see come in here a lot because they're, they want to know what are my options. One of the first things, the number one tip I could probably give you about construction and, and building a house and windows is please get involved. Please pay attention. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Because there's so many choices, so many things you have to decide on when you're building a house that sometimes the things that are common just get overlooked. You know, here's what I've seen. I see people, they spend a lot of time on what floors they're going to put in the house, what light fixtures, what water faucet, what granite countertops. I mean, these are all important things and they are decisions that you have to make. And it can be overwhelming. I get that. But for some reason, we tend to forget the things like, what kind of air conditioner am I getting? What are the quality of the windows someone's putting into my house? What type of composition roofing am I getting, right? These are things that later on, if you've owned your house for a while and all the dust settles, you start asking yourself, gee, I wonder what they did here. Oh, I wonder what they did there. The fact that you are paying attention, which is probably why you're even watching this video, to what window choices are being made is going to go a long way because here's what I've learned. Most typical builders, not all, but typical builders, they're going to put in the products that they have to put in to get the house built. Because here's a typical situation. You make a, a plans for a house. The builder says, I'll do it for X number of dollars. And then, of course, between what, it, what he charges you and what he can pay for these things, the greater that distance is, the more profit is involved for them. So saving money on things is important to a builder. They want to use quality, but they may not use the quality that you would use if you're involved in selecting your own product. So pay attention. That's number one, that's very important. Number two is structure your agreement with your general contractor or your builder in a way that allows for exceptions or changes to the project without being um, a one-sided or lopsided equation. Let me give you an example here. I see homeowners, hundreds of them a year, that walk through our showroom and they say, hey, we decided to get involved in the window selection process. Now they come in, they look around, oh, I like this Pella window. Gee, I wonder what my builder's putting in. Then the builder's putting in some brand no one's ever heard of with a terrible warranty using poor quality glass and poor quality materials. Now the builder's not at fault, it's just what he's always used because it's the company he goes to for his stuff because it's got the best price. Now they go back to the homeowner and say, you know what, we got involved, we went to Houston Window Experts, we like Pella, or we like Windsor, or we like Amsco, or Anlin. And the builder says, oh well, I wasn't planning on that, I didn't budget for that. Now all of a sudden, it's this conflict between you and your builder because you're trying to figure out who's going to pay and how much. So here's what I've seen happen. A builder, and I'm not saying builders are dishonest, it's just they don't always know what to budget for stuff. When you go to them and say, what do we budget for windows? It's probably going to be a very low number. They might say, well, we budgeted $5,000, when maybe they really budgeted $10,000 or $15,000. They just lumped that into a category. They really don't know how much they budgeted specifically for windows. Well, if you pick $20,000 worth of windows and they budgeted five, now we've got a problem. So how do we solve that problem? Well, I found that the smart homeowners who are building a custom home they negotiate up front with the builder some of these ideas, like the windows, etc. But if not doing it that way right up front, they also talk about a different structure, which would be a cost plus structure. Now, you may not want to do that. It may not be advisable for you. It may not be something your general contractor wants to do. But what I like about a cost plus structure is if you make changes along the way while you're building your new home to whatever it might be, you might decide you want to pick out a different type of roofing. I want to go with a metal roof instead of a composition roof. Now, it's just a matter of him saying, sounds good to me, or her saying, sounds good to me, and they just make a markup on whatever choices you make as you go through the building process. 
Doing something like that allows you the flexibility to go ahead and pick the products you want on the fly as you go through the process and you know what you're going to pay for. That was number two, structure the best deal possible. Now, number three is think about selections, right? Sometimes people forget about what, what to put and where. Uh, I see this common mistake. I see people forget to put a window in a bathroom that operates. I think it's important to have a window in a bathroom that operates. You can only imagine why. Well, yes, because you have a teenager who showers for 45 minutes and the room gets very humid. That's one reason. But also, I, I found people forget to put them in the kitchen. I mean, what happens if you burn the cookies, you burn the lasagna? It's good to have an operable window in the kitchen. And one other thing I notice a lot that I think is really something you should do is you should put a window in your closet. Now, maybe it's up high, one of those little small transom windows, but you think it's good to have natural light in a closet because if you go to pull out uh, a, a pair of socks and you're holding them up to a shirt, you're trying to figure, is this dark blue, is this navy, or is this black? Hard to tell if you don't have good natural lighting. Also, having natural lighting in the house is just really good for your health. A lot of studies have shown that the more natural light you have, and of course, energy efficient, right? But the more natural light you have, the better you feel. The longer you'll live, the happier you'll be. And if you're building a forever home, think about having more light. Think about what type of window to put where. Also, you might consider across the back of your house, instead of having three or four small windows, what if you put in one really large window? In some cases, it actually saves you money and it gives you better view. Another thing to consider a design is the grids. Am I gonna put the grids, like these dividers you see right here? Am I gonna put grids on my windows? If I am gonna put grids, how many am I gonna put? Is it gonna be just three like this one is? Or is it gonna be like this one here? Is it three in a horizontal way? Or is it that checkerboard design like you see in a real traditional home? These are things that having an expert like Houston Window Experts can really help you make those decisions where they fit well with your design, they fit well with the function. You know, we see a lot of homeowners that buy windows from us that had already built a home or they bought a home from years ago. One of the biggest changes we see them make now that, that we've never seen before was they're going with a lot fewer grids on the house, right? These grid things, if they do them at all. And also they're wanting to convert smaller windows into bigger windows. And another thing we're seeing too is a lot of times windows that don't need to operate, windows that aren't in a bedroom, for example, they don't even operate. They just make them fixed windows. So these are things that you should consider, I think, Considering design, that's number three, considering the design is an important thing to do. And getting professional help for that would also be really a good thing to do before you build your house, not after. Number four tip is plan for the future. What do I mean by plan for the future? Well, we see a lot of homeowners that come to us and they say, when I built my house, I thought about doing it, but I didn't do it, right? I thought about across the back here, someday we put in a pool, and I thought, when we put in a pool, instead of having these four small windows or three medium-sized windows, whatever it is, I'd like to have a big sliding door, like that beautiful sliding door you see behind me. So let's suppose that you decided you might want to do that, but you weren't going to do it today because of budget or whatever the case may be. Think about building in a header, building in a header right now across the back of the house, like a 16-foot opening or something, and then framing smaller pieces inside that header to accommodate today's windows is a smart thing to do because putting in the header later is gonna require a lot more money and a lot more work than if it was already behind the wall. So if you think ahead, you plan ahead, think about what you might wanna do with certain openings and plan those now with your builder so that it costs less money later when you do it. Hey, just on a side note while we're thinking about that, one of the great reasons for doing all this thinking up front is it's really expensive to change windows once they're in the home much more so than other things. And you know, countertops and light fixtures and faucets, those things are inexpensive to change, relatively inexpensive, when you do them five or 10 years down the road. But windows, much more expensive. Windows need to really survive the whole length of time you're in the home because they will. So pick a window up front and be smart about it. Okay, so that was number four. Number five, probably the most important thing of all the decisions you make when it comes to replacing, excuse me, to buying windows for your new home, is who's going to do the installation. You should always have the company that sold you the windows do the installation. You should have the company who's doing the installations be the one who sold you the windows. That's a good, that's a good match because general contractors, their whole name says it all, general. They're a general. They're over an army of specialists, people who are great at what they do. And you know what? They might have a great window installer and maybe they do, I don't know. I'm not knocking that. What I'm saying is that the important part of any window product you buy is going to be who's doing the installation. Who does it and are they doing it right? And is it the kind of thing that they can stand behind? You know, we give a warranty to all of our installations, a lifetime warranty. 
In fact, we have a great video in case you live somewhere else and we're not going to do the installation for you. Check it out. I'll put a little link right there about how to install a window properly, the right way, in a new construction environment. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Let me recap for you again, okay? Number one, pay attention. Pay attention to what you're doing, and that's good that you're even watching this video. Number two, structure your agreement with your builder so there's room for flexibility so you can make changes. Number three, think about what kind of windows you put in where. Think about your design. Think about that closet. I think you're going to thank me later. Number four, plan ahead for changes. Think about putting in a nice header ahead of time if you're going to put in a big door someday. And then number five, and most importantly, I think, is good professional proper installation. Well, if you're looking for a great window company in Houston, I'm your guy. If you're looking for one somewhere else, check out jeffslist.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like. I look forward to talking to you again real soon.